What's up everybody, hope everyone's doing well. Today we're gonna to be talking about the Bimmer Geeks Pro Tool software. Um, it's a really, really in-depth, really, really comprehensive tool. I've had it for quite a while now, and recently I've been using it more and more and taking more advantage of all the functions that it has. Basically what this Bimmer Geeks Pro Tool software does is, is it's focused on coding as well as diagnostics. It's a really, really comprehensive tool. In a lot of ways it can replace BMW standard tools if you don't have a computer set up to have those running and it's really easy just to have on a tablet just to keep in the car with you it's always with you and when you're out on the go if you ever would need it so again we're gonna be doing a quick high-level overview of exactly what it is what it looks like the different functionalities that it has and um, how to go about using it for your own car all right, so here we go. This is the setup that I use to run this software. Uh, I use this for really all the software that I use for this car, but it really starts off with this MHD orange Wi-Fi adapter. Um, this is made specific for this car. It's also made to work, of course, with the MHT software, which I use separately, but this will also work with the Bimmer Geeks Pro Tool as well. And this really just plugs right down into the OBD2 port. And once that's plugged in, all you have to do is go onto your tablet or whatever you're using to run your software. In this case, this is a Amazon Fire tablet. I think it's the 8, something like that. I'm, I'm not sure. Again, I'll have a link to this, the, the Wi-Fi adapter and everything that I, else that I'm using in the description below if you want to check it out. Basically, this tablet was the easiest and cheapest way that I could get um, an Android-based device, which is what you need for all of this different software. Um, it, I think I got this for like less than 50 bucks on Amazon or something like that. And you just need to convert it to run the Google Play Store and you're good to go for everything that you need. Once your Wi-Fi adapter is plugged in, you just have to go into settings, wireless, Bluetooth. I want to make sure that the Wi-Fi is connected to my MHD signal. So then you just hit connect and the app will start doing its thing. We'll start communicating with the Wi-Fi adapter and it'll start getting all the information from the car. All right, so now we're connected. It just popped up. You can see it has the last digits of my VIN. It has the model and chassis information. It auto detected all of that, which is great. And we are good to go. So now this is the home screen interface. Now there's a couple different options that you have from Bimmer Geeks on the different licenses you can get and the access that that'll give you to the app here. First of all, you they have two separate coding and diagnostics licenses, or you can get the master's license, which is a slight discount for the both of them. You can read more into exactly what's included in each one of those licenses, but it's pretty self-explanatory. For me, I just got the master's license, so I have full access to the app, all the capabilities, everything that it can do. And again, it's a really powerful tool. I would highly recommend getting both options. So starting with the vehicle option, that's a big one that you'll likely go into. So here, this is where you can read all of your vehicle errors. So let's do that real quick. It's gonna get the errors, read them, and when it pulls up and displays them, you see that these are all of the different control units in the car. So one of the big advantages of the software is that it reads each one of the control units and will report back the errors, if it finds any, according to which control unit they're coming from. So you can see like DME engine stuff, no errors right there, which is great. Right now we're in a good place. My car's running pretty good right now. A lot of time the BMWs are gonna have a ton of errors in here, but uh, we're in a pretty good place with mine right now. So there's not gonna be too many examples. But again, you can kind of see one by one the different control units and here we go, okay, so there's some weird software reset error in the FIB emergency caller control unit. I'm not worried about that, but it tells you exactly what happens. And if you wanna like look into one of them, so here we have a steering angle adjustment code that was thrown at one point. You can click on it and it tells you a, a lot of times in German um, what that is, but it gives you the exact BMW code. It tells you the mileage that it occurred at, how many times it occurred, and you can actually go straight from here to Googling the errors. So that's a really great function. That's really helpful to have that control unit by control unit breakdown for your errors. You can read them and clear them the way that you would be able to with any other scanner for the most part. So the next piece I wanna to touch on on this vehicle menu is the vehicle order. So if you click on that, it'll bring you to the vehicle order. 
this is recorded on your car's CAS and FRM. So that's your car access system and your footwell module. Um, I'm gonna dive into this more in a different video, but basically what the vehicle order is, is a list of every single option along with the BMW factory specific option code that is on your car from the factory. Um, if you're getting into a bit more advanced coding, this is going to be an area that you're gonna be doing some work in. Again, I'm not gonna to dive too much into it right now, but if that's what you're looking at, this is where to find it. So other things you can do on this vehicle menu, it gives you, you can click on control units, that'll give you a whole list of your control units, I'm gonna to go to that in a second. Battery history tells you how many times your battery's been changed and if it has been registered each time, you can see that I re changed and registered my battery like 5,000 miles ago, so that record's in there. Um, battery swap makes allows you to do that battery registration uh, and coding as well. Maintenance reset, that's for your iDrive maintenance notifications. If you wanna reset any of those, it's like your brake fluid, vehicle check, that sort of thing. And then if you're some for some reason in transport mode, you can take that off through this menu as well. But again, I wanna click on the control units, and here's another list of every single control unit that is on your car. And what you can do from this list is you can click on any one of these. So I wanna go look at the CAS, I can click on that, and then I can go to either the Pro Tools menu for that control unit, or I can jump straight to the coding for it, different functions, different stuff like that. This is just a, another way to get into the control units of the car and dig into it through the control unit list. So that about covers it for the vehicle icon on the main menu here. The remaining icons are all going to be similar and in that they're really just categories for different control units of the car and Pro Tools organizes them that way and also offers a couple different uh, functions that you can do when you get into it. So with the drivetrain menu, that's gonna be your engine, your transmission module, your fuel pump, X drive system. So in this case, if I wanted to get into the engine, it, it, you click on that and then it comes up with this secondary menu where I can read the errors specific to that control module, the, N, the DME. Um, you can clear the errors just in that one module instead of on the other, on the vehicle tab, if I hit clear errors, that would have cleared errors across the whole vehicle. This would do it just specifically to this module. Um, functions, when you're doing functions, this is coming up with the control unit specific options that you might need to do to your car. So for the engine stuff, OBD2 readiness, that's that's gonna show you your emissions readiness for like the catalyst, the EVAP system, all that sort of stuff. You can also clear your adaptations here. Uh, injector coding, this is a big one for the N54s. You gotta swap out your injectors a lot. They need to be co coded specifically to the car. You can do that right through this menu here. Battery history, that's just another way to get to that same information from before. Battery swap, again, the same thing. Idle adjustment, if you're playing with the, your idle, you can actually do that right here. Valvetronic calibration, reading the VIN, reading the ECU, and then there's more in-depth expert functions that you can do as well. So the next option on this submenu is your live data. So you can get some gauges running, and I should have some already set up here, and the car's not running right now, so we're not getting a whole ton of data, but you can see here, just like the, similar to how you would in MHD or something like that, these are all of my engine gauges for live data. Currently set up with oil temp, IATs, boost, coolant temps, high pressure fuel pump. Again, the car's not running right now, but this is just like the same exact gauge layout that you can get set up through MHD, but you can do it through Pro Tools and Right now, it's showing that sort of stuff. That's how I have it preset up for the engine function. But you can go into other control units and see similar live data for other control units that you might need for diagnostics or something like that. It's a really, really cool function. I'll try and show you in a few minutes in a different module. Next option is control. This is where you can actually manipulate functions of the car through the app, through Pro Tools. So this is actually a, a list of things that if I were to toggle these options, it would actually activate it in the car. So electrical coolant pump. If I wanted to turn on the coolant pump, 
I would go into here and toggle that on and it would actually activate the coolant pump even though the car is not running. You can do a lot of different stuff like this. Again, I'm gonna show you in a couple different other control units some other options, but this is a really, really cool thing. Again, if you're diagnosing something, you're not sure if a part is working properly, you go in here, a car doesn't have to be running, it doesn't have to be operating normally, you isolate what issue that you're trying to find and you get it to, you try and activate it and you see if it works properly. And then the last option on this sub menu is the coding option. So of course, this is the different coding options. You probably have heard a lot about coding, changing things, customizing uh, options on the car. There's not a whole lot in the engine because it's, it's not really the module that you would go to for most of this, but this is where you would go do a whole lot of that different stuff. So that was just showing the sub menu for the engine, which is underneath drivetrain in the app here. Under chassis, Pro Tools has DSC and RDC, which is the tire pressure control. Not gonna go a whole lot into that because there's not a whole lot to see there. Safety, that's where there's, you're probably gonna be working a lot. That's where your CAS is, car access system. A lot of coding's done through that. Um, footwell module, FRM, another big one for coding. Comfort access, another big one for coding. So I'll actually show you, we could do some things in the FRM, I think. Let that load up for a sec. Again, same option. So let's see what functions we have for this module. All right, so on a lot of these cars, a lot of people upgrade their FRM to get different features and stuff like that. When you do that, you need to change the VIN of your FRM to match the VIN of the car that it's going into. This is where you would go to do that. You could go in here, you would read the VIN, it would tell you what's currently on the FRM, and then you can change it to match the car so that it operates properly within the car when you're retrofitting it. So then this is probably a cool opportunity to show you some cool control functions. So if I were to go into control, again, this is going to enable me to be able to control certain things in the car. And then let's see. Okay, so windows. So open window driver. And look at that, the driver's side window opened. Now we want to close it, we toggle this one. Close window driver. So again, that's a really cool thing where I'm not touching anything on the car, it's going all through this app. And if you're doing some sort of diagnostics where you're trying to figure out if something's working properly, this would be a really easy way to just do it right through here. So now we'll talk a little bit about the coding options. So you click on that, it'll give you some options. You usually wanna just hit edit coding. And that's gonna bring up the different coding options for whatever module that you're in. The footwell module happens to contain a number of different the popular coding options um, and really Pro Tools makes it easy for you to access those where they organize them. You have popular, standard, and expert. So you can toggle between each of these different menus in the app here with the popular stuff being the most common things that people code within whatever module you're in. So for, for example, the footwell module, you can code how many times your turn signal blinks if you were to just tap it. Um, your welcome lights, all sorts of different stuff. There's a ton of stuff in here. I'm gonna make a separate video talking about different coding options, but this is the most popular stuff that people do. Expert is full access to the raw coding of the module that you're in. For most of this stuff, Pro Tools has translated it from the German that it really comes in to English. In expert mode, since they're including everything, you're gonna see some stuff that is still just in German and um, you can really, really get into the weeds in this expert mode. You can really change anything that you want. Again, it's very, very powerful if you're doing this stuff. Make sure you know what you're doing ahead of time. Be careful and make sure you know what you're doing because in the expert mode, you can really start messing stuff up if you're just clicking around, not paying attention. So that was the footwell module underneath the safety category, footwell module, car access system, comfort access. Again, those are two common, common ones for coding. Interior, they have a couple different ones, junction box, climate control, cluster. The, the cluster is another common one for, for coding stuff. And then entertainment, you have your, it's like your navigation, your, your audio stuff, all that sort of stuff. There's a couple coding things in here. But again, these are just the different control units organized different ways.
So that's about everything that I really wanted to just give a quick overview on with the Bimmer Geeks Pro Tool software. Um, again, it's a really, really powerful tool. You can do a lot with it and it can be a little bit confusing at times. Um, so take your time with it, get yourself familiar with the interface um, and where the different modules are, are found and the different places you might need to go. And there's also a lot of great um, information on the Bimmer Geeks website. So if you go on there, you go to the help section, they have a whole FAQ, they have a whole thing explaining how to use the app. I encourage you to check that out as well. It's a really great resource, a lot of really great information in there. But again, I hope that was helpful. I hope if you're considering different tools that you're gonna use to help maintain your BMW, help track its uh, performance, make sure that it's operating well, that this is something that you might look into and you might find Find this video helpful uh, before you go ahead and make the purchase again it's something that I found to be really useful during my ownership experience and lastly this was a very high level quick overview of just how to use the app where to find things the video coming out next week will be talking about specific things that I've coded to my car and some of the best things that I think you can code to these cars to kind of customize the experience uh, make the car operate in ways that are uh, a little bit better for you and kind of cool in some ways um, so be sure to check out that video next week that I'll be going a little bit more in depth actually using this to code things on the car and showing you how that works as well as the the end result of the different things that we've coded. But thanks again for watching. If you have any questions on the Bimmer Geeks Pro Tool stuff, drop a comment, shoot me a message, let me know. I'm happy to help out. I am by no means a coding expert. There's people who've done retrofits that are way more complicated and the coding associated with it, the, it's, there's a lot to it that you can really dive into. I'm by no means an expert, but I have spent a good amount of time working with the, the Bimmer Geeks tool. Um, so I'll try to help you out best I can. And a lot of this information is available online on the forums, all that sort of stuff. So make sure you're using all your resources. But yeah, that's gonna be it for now. And we'll see you next time. Peace.